Hi gang, Joe Fisher here again. I thought you might like to see what's inside of here. I know there's a lot of people who, uh, who are interested in electric breweries these days because they're awesome. So I'll give you a quick tour of what's inside. Um, I'm going to have to post real schematics and stuff to on my website one of these days. But for now, we'll just give you the, uh, the tour. Alright guys, here we go. So, start, I don't know if you can see this as a pointer here, but these uh, four wires here, this is my 220 50 amp feed from the panel. I'll show you the panel a little later. Um, this is a 50 amp appliance cord that I just got at Home Depot. I'll try to put sources for all of these goodies in the description down below. So of course you've got ground which goes to the common ground bar over here that's always green. You've got neutral. We need a neutral here because <clears throat> we're breaking the 220 into two 110 legs. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so you've got your neutral is white, your two hots are black and red. So those are each 110, 120 volts in opposite phase, 180 degrees apart. So that's how we get our 110 or 120 from 220. This is the main power switch. All the power comes in here. And this power switch is hooked up to this big knob on the top by this aluminum bar. The aluminum bar goes down into this little keyed hole that's right here so that when you turn the knob on top it turns this switch and turns everything hot or cold so now we've got two hots L1, L2 and a neutral so the 220 is broken out into a 30 amp 220 breaker a 30 amp 220 breaker and two 10 amp 110 breakers so the reason that I'm using separate breakers here, uh, I see a lot of guys, what they do is they just have a bus bar like this for their hot, and they'll bring the heavy 6 or 8 gauge lead in, and then just pull 14 and 16 gauge leads off as they need them. I don't like doing that because now those light wires are protected only by the 50 amp circuit breaker in the panel. So if those light wires overload, like let's say a 14 gauge wire, that's rated for what? 15 amps, right? So let's say something in the system pulls 20 amps on that 15 amp wire. It's not going to trip the circuit breaker, but that wire isn't heavy enough to stand that amperage and it's going to melt. Could cause a fire, we don't want that. So I like to use separate breakers for everything and appropriately sized wire. My 30 amp breakers all have 10 gauge, my 10 amp breakers have 14 gauge. It's okay to use a heavier gauge wire, that's always safe. That's the main power distribution here. We've got a ground bus for all of our ground things. We've got a neutral bus to run neutrals for our 110. You notice that uh, there's a neutral wire going to each side here on the 110 circuit. And this is the hot bus for the light stuff, like our pumps, fans, whatever is connected to these four outlets back here. These four outlets are switched. There are four switches in the front here. You can't really see them but the, uh, these four switches in the front control these four outlets. These are all one, two, three, four separate outlets. Um, all right, let's talk about the power. This is, this is the interesting part. You know, PIDs, if you've done some research, you know these are the things that control your heating elements. They, they pulse the heating elements on and off to try to maintain a temperature. The, they're not heavy enough to run a 220-volt heating element. You see they only have very light wires coming out of them. These are protected by 
Incidentally, uh, very small one amp fuses. There's two one amp fuse holders here, one for each of these, and those protect the light wires that go to these. Because <clears throat> the PIDs themselves don't use very much current at all. What these do is these switch these guys. These are SSRs, solid state relays. And these can switch very fast, and there are no mechanical contacts to wear out. So the PID flashes a signal on and off that turns these relays on and off, these solid state relays. And you'll notice it has light wires on this side. These go to the, SS, uh, the PIDs. And these are the heavy lugs, these are the power lugs. Notice they're 10 gauge, 30 amps. These drive the actual um, heating elements. You can see these wires go over here and come around here to these two heavy outlets. There's two big 30 amp appliance outlets here. And those, the heating elements plug into them. Now, what I did, I did something a little, a little extra here. I wanted to be able to kill the elements with a switch. So I added contactors, which are these two black boxes that you see here, one for each element. And they're basically big relays. So they're mechanical relays. And um, there's a switch on the front of the, the box. You saw it in my previous video, that green switch that lit up when I turned it on. That switch turns these contactors on and off. If a contactor is off, then no matter what the state of these relays are, there's never ever power at the outlets. So that means if I see that green light is off, I know that the elements are cold. Do you need it? Maybe, maybe not. I like it. It's a safety thing for me. Alright, so what else do we talk about here? We've got a fan. There's a 110 volt fan that I got at Radio Shack. We've got two connectors on the side here. These are for the temperature probes for the PIDs. You can see they're just little snap-on connectors with three wires because these are RTD probes, not thermocouples. And RTDs have a third wire. So those are attached to the PIDs. So some advice if you're going to do something like this. Be neat. You can see all my wires are gathered here. I've got little uh, little clips to hang everything. Nothing's just pushed in, mashed in here. Everything is neat. And that's more than me just being an anal retentive engineer. That's it's It helps with being able to trace all the wires, being able to troubleshoot the system when you first put it together, being able to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. We're working with a lot of amperage and voltage here. You know, we're talking 50 amps of current. That's going to kill somebody. So being able to trace your wires properly and make sure everything is safe is paramount. All right, so I'll give you a little close-up view of the back here. You can see we've got one, two, three, four switched outlets. The fan here, these holes are for exhaust for the fan. So the fan blows directly across these two SSRs, solid state relays, and under the solid state relays, I forgot to mention, are heat sinks. Because these all the current runs through here, so these get hot. And those heat sinks also get hot. They pull the they suck the heat away from the relays. And the fan here blows directly across those two heat sinks. And that air needs somewhere to go. So I drilled some holes here and the air pushes, uh, the warm air comes back out there. This is the main power feed. You can see the, the giant plug here on the end of that. These are my two heating elements. And that's it. It's mounted on a television stand to the side of my rig so that I can swivel it as I see fit. Alright, now let's go to the power. So this is my power panel here. I've got a 50 amp two pole breaker here that goes to my little sub panel. This is a spa sub panel. It's designed for just what it says. It's uh, for hooking up a spa. 
You can get these. I got this at Home Depot. They're not that expensive. This one came with a 50 amp GFCI breaker in it. So the cable from my main box comes in here, feeds this GFCI breaker, and then the power from the GFCI breaker goes down to this outlet box. And this outlet box is what powers my rig. And it's really pretty simple. It's just the same thing. It's four wires. Make sure you use the right gauge. I, I think it's eight gauge for 50 amp. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory to hook up. There's directions in the box. Just make sure you get these right. You got your two hots. The two hots can go either side. It really doesn't matter. Two hots, a ground, and a neutral. And that's it. Any specific questions, you want any photos of any specific part of it, I'm happy to help you guys out. Just uh, put it in the comments, find me at manscriptbrewing.com, send me an email, and I uh, hope to hear from you. So, like these, um, these, all of the, God, I can't speak today. I don't think BNC is right. Let's start over again.